And it's really a pleasure to be here uh, to speak in uh, the Nader Symposium. It's a real honor for me to be here representing the biochemistry PhD program. I've been a member of CUNY. I've been a faculty member at CUNY for 17 years now. And I've been the executive officer of the biochemistry PhD for the last seven years. And it's really in those last seven years I've grown to know uh, Fred and uh, the work that he's been doing. I've interacted with him before that, but mostly I've gotten to know him those last seven years, so my remarks will be mostly focused on our interactions uh, as the, at the CUNY Biochemistry PhD program. So what is the Graduate Center? Some of you I know are not from CUNY, and this, all these acronyms and all these different institutions. CUNY is actually 20 plus institutions cr across five boroughs of uh, New York City, and it can be very confusing to understand, but one of the units of CUNY is known as the Graduate Center, and that's where the PhD granting authority uh, comes from, from the university, and that was really began in the 1960s, and the first president of the Graduate Center is shown here, Mina Rees, uh, and Mina's really contemplating how to do doctoral education, uh, and this really set the stage uh, when Fred came in the 1970s, some of her decisions that she made in the 1960s about doctoral education. So she was a mathematician and she was methodical about thinking about how are we going to form a PhD program at CUNY. Uh, so she went uh, and looked at how other universities organized uh, uh, their graduate programs, and she said she grappled with many issues, inclu inclu including how to organize a PhD uh, work as a central function of the university and how to encourage its growth in separate, separate colleges. I think it's especially important thinking of outer borough colleges like the College of Staten Island that's not close to uh, other universities, other parts of CUNY, and how would they interact? Uh, and she wanted to make sure that the growth in separate colleges, how to prevent the growth of a doctoral program in one college from tending to weaken another college in this area, and how to uh, interchange a faculty of students to encourage uh, uh, interaction between the different colleges. And in 1960, she decided on a model that was based really on the Oxford-Cambridge model of consortium uh, doctoral education, where the faculty weren't based at just one institution, but were actually based at multiple institutions. Uh, but the umbrella organization is known as a graduate center. And uh, as you know, Fred came to the College of Staten Island in the early 1970s, uh, and they asked our uh, secretary at the uh, Graduate Center, Judy Lee, to pull out the records on Fred uh, to do my investigations here, and I found the original uh, letter of uh, acceptance into the PhD program into the Graduate Center, uh, dated uh, June, I think, 18th, uh, 1973, in which Fred was formally uh, accepted to be a doctoral member of the PhD program in biochemistry. So he's been an important member of the doctoral program for 42 uh, uh, years, and he's been a critical member. I think one of our faculty describes him as a pillar of biochemistry, and I think that is really how I think of Fred in my interactions, that not only, as we've heard from many of his colleagues here, his scientific depth, but also his interest in the program as a whole, in the doctoral education as a, uh, as a function of CUNY and how to do that at the very best way possible. Uh, so I think uh, these 42 years at CUNY have really been an amazing uh, time for us. CUNY, again, is the doctoral program in biochemistry has about 110 faculty members over seven different participating campuses, and there's more than 60 doctoral students. Uh, so the Graduate Center is located here in Manhattan, uh, and obviously we're here at the College of Staten Island, and the other, other schools are represented uh, from, uh, from the Bronx through uh, Brooklyn, uh, Queens, and so forth. So I think uh, of the 110 faculty members of the biochemistry program, that Fred is really one of the outstanding members who's contributed at so many levels to doctoral education. Uh, I just wanted to go through a few of these levels in which he's participated in the biochemistry program. Uh, these include mentoring uh, and serving on committees. So it's given a, uh, a list of uh, Fred's doctoral students. Fred has uh, been a mentor to many students. Uh, these include students in the biochemistry PhD program, which I'll focus on, but he's also mentored students uh, in the chemistry PhD program. 
Uh, and he's also co-mentored students. We've heard from several uh, of the students that he's mentored or co-mentored in today's program. Uh, and the ones I've listed here are the ones that I think I got them all, are the ones that are the PhD students from the biochemistry uh, program. Forgive me if I've missed anyone. Uh, and I think one of the, the greatest ways of measuring a mentor's success is uh, looking at the students and their success in themselves, and also one way of looking at that success is looking at the publications that they have uh, been able to uh, write with their mentor. So I, I, I did uh, some homework on this, Fred, and I, I did a Medline search, and I, I looked up each of these students' uh, papers that they have published with you, and there are many papers that have come out published with you um, that are listed on Medline, so I'm sure I haven't caught them all, but. Uh, there are some listed here from, uh, from your last student to your, uh, your first student to your last student uh, in the biochemistry PhD program. So I think it's a real testament looking at all the different papers. Uh, Leah Cohen, who will be speaking next, uh, uh, takes the cake. She has the most publications with Fred. Some of those are in her new, new role now as a, uh, as a lecturer here in, at the College of Staten Island. Again, I think, you know, publishing is important, and one of the ways I think I've seen as executive officer of biochemistry, so many students who uh, have trouble publishing their doctoral dissertation research. Uh, what we've tried to do in the biochemistry PhD program is to encourage students to publish their PhD research while they're still a student. So during the course of their PhD work, that is, they get data that they actually uh, publish in the peer review literature. Uh, and one way that we try to encourage this in the doctoral programs through the, uh, an award that we started in 1999, uh, 2009, rather, which is known as the Horst Schultz Award, uh, named in the honor of a former executive officer of the PhD program. And these are, it's for the best peer-reviewed first author publication by a current CUNY biochemistry student in the program. I think it's a real testament that two of Fred's students, and we've heard uh, both of their research talked about in an earlier presentation by uh, Oliver Zerbe, uh, where uh, both Leah uh, Cohen uh, for her 2008 paper uh, and Katrina uh, Karocia for her 2011 paper as well. So two of Fred's students uh, won this uh, uh, award, and I think that really, to me, speaks of the the high level of mentorship in his laboratory, that not only are students doing great research, but they're able to publish their research in outstanding journals even prior to getting their PhD. You know, one of my favorite uh, CUNY ads are found on the subway. So for those of you not from New York City, CUNY invest in subway ads. And since I take the subway often, I often, I enjoy looking at the advertisements. And one of the advertisements, a few years back, were kind of pathways to success. How do students achieve success within CUNY? Or what are success stories? And I think if we look at Fred Nader's lab, we'd see a lot of success stories. Uh, and the one I pulled out, uh, is from Katrina, who was kind enough to respond to my email uh, requesting a success story uh, and uh, giving me a photo. So I appreciate uh, Katrina's willingness to participate in this uh, exercise. But I think this story is not, I think, unique to Katrina. I think if we looked at everyone's most uh, stories in uh, Fred's lab, we would see a, success, a similar road to success and with perhaps some surprising turns that, are, uh, that were accommodated through him as a mentor and as CUNY as a system. Uh, so Katrina was an undergraduate in the Honors College. Uh, she was based here at CSI, and in 2008, she got her degree in chemistry uh, from, uh, from this institution. I can remember that Katrina has told me that she took classes with Fred and later on did research in his lab as an undergraduate, and that really shaped her interest in science and perhaps pulled her into lab science where that may not have been the road that she was initially thinking about. So I think you know, those experiences with Fred in the early days as an undergraduate really shaped her. She then joined the PhD program uh, uh, at the Graduate Center and she got her PhD in 2013 in biochemistry uh, with, uh, with, with Fred again uh, in 2013. And now she's working in uh, uh, a biotech company, Regeneron. And she wrote that, although I took an alternative career and no longer at the bench, my time at the Nader lab prepared me in more ways than I can even begin to describe 
My job at Regeneron requires me to review scientific data from a variety of fields and present the results in such a way that, key, uh, that the key message is clearly communicated. Dr. Nader helped me to develop the critical thinking skills that I use on a daily basis, which has proven to be more valuable than any skill I have acquired at the bench. So I think Katrina's idea of the importance of, I think, the mentorship that Fred has provided to so many of his students uh, have, has been life-changing. Fred, I think, has been willing to serve on so many committees. I think that's one of the wonderful parts of Fred as a committed uh, academic, that he's not only uh, I think doing what uh, the research and the, I guess, uh, the very uh, intellectual things that are necessary as part of a academic life, but he's willing to do the nitty gritty that's necessary for the training of the next generation of scientists. And part of that nitty gritty is something that we don't like to think about too often, perhaps, is curriculum development. And uh, when I asked one of the former executive officers what he remembered, he, he specifically remembered uh, what an important role that Fred played in revitalizing our curriculum, especially in our, key, our core course, which is known as physical biochemistry. He played uh, a long, important role in the development of that course, uh, and this is one of the core courses that still is important in our students' training. He had taught that course for a number of years. Now other people are teaching that course, but he really is the person who set that course into motion at the Graduate Center, has trained many, many PhD students in biochemistry, the basics of physical biochemistry. And together with a colleague at City, uh, City College, he revised and greatly improved this course to, uh, in a team top manner. So I thank you, Fred, for not only the training and mentorship of your own students, but for the bro broader program in biochemistry, the contributions that you've made in that respect as well. So I've been executive officer for seven years, and uh, for the, for, uh, before that, we had two other executive officers who worked closely with Fred over the last 30 years. Uh, that includes Professor Horst Schultz, who's unfortunately not able to be here today, but sends his best, uh, as well as Leslie Davenport, who is here today. I just wanted to say a few remarks from these former executive officers of the biochemistry program. So for Horst, who was... Uh, executive officers for almost 20 years of the biochemistry program. For all the years that I was executive officer, Fred Nader was one of the most important faculty members of the biochemistry PhD programs. My worries about student progress were greatly reduced when I was advised that a new student had selected Fred to be his or her mentor. She, he was uh, an excellent mentor with outstanding and hence well-funded research program dedicated and uh, dedicated and good scientific guidance, had uh, necessary laboratory resources, and sufficient financial support to advocate, to advance their products, projects. I wish Fred well in his retirement and, and sorry not to be able to attend this symposium. Perhaps in retirement is a little premature. Uh, <laughs> and secondly, from Leslie, who served as uh, executive officer prior to me. Uh, as EO, I saw firsthand how committed and generous Fred was with the biochemistry and doctoral students. He takes his teaching commitments very seriously and gave his time freely to the students. He cared deeply about ensuring that the program provided the students with the important tools necessary for their future careers in science and beyond. And as a distinguished professor, he served as a key biochem he, he served on a key he served several key biochemistry program committees, providing experience, insight, wise advice, and clear perspective. So I think, as you can see, I think the, the, the idea that he really is such an important figure in the, not only the international community of biochemistry, but in maintaining a high standard in biochemistry at the City University of New York. So as you heard, I came from Pittsburgh. I'm on, actually on sabbatical this, uh, some, this year. I was uh, uh, I was actually at the Chinese University of Hong Kong uh, prior to uh, uh, April, and I came back. And when I first heard about the symposium, I, it was in uh, it was on in Hong Kong time, at least. It was uh, December second, uh, and I got an email with the uh, flyer on the right hand side. Save that date. I was really excited to hear about this symposium, and uh, I immediately wrote back to Fred saying. Uh, to congratulate with him, because he has been such an inspiration to me. 
Uh, and uh, and I you know, assured him that if there were any way that I could be here, I would be here. Uh, and I wanted to say finally, as I write in the email, I'd like to say that your commitment to CSI, to CUNY, the GC graduate program, and most of all to research and your students serves, you, serves as an inspiration to me. You know, after 17 years at CUNY, <clears throat> during the darkest days, I can look at your uh, uh, perseverance and great success at another outer borough college and soldier onwards. So again, I think the word that uh, Ruth Stark used, the optimism that Fred has in his love of CSI, his love of biochemistry, uh, and his love of uh, his students and colleagues really has been inspirational to me, and I imagine to many of you out there as well. So thank you for this opportunity to speak today, and uh, I won't take any questions. <laughs> thank you, Edward, for a